first layer of a two-layer exterior foam retrofit installed, Calvin and Damien turn to the outer layer, which will be the primary drainage plane and air barrier. They begin with a starter piece, again attaching it with two screws until the furring strips go on. You may notice that the seams are already taped on these sheets. That's because they wanted to pre-fit the pieces before we shot a video, and then they got carried away and taped the seams. Anyway, the foam is tucked tightly into the bug shield, and they install as close to full sheets as possible. Certainly, they cover seams in the first layer with solid panels in the second. Again, the pieces should be snug. Typically, they work from one corner to the other. In this case, the middle of the house is broken up by a large staircase, so they are working from each corner towards the middle. Once the corner is plumb and level, they fasten it off. Again, succeeding pieces should fit tightly. Cantilever sections, like outside corners, have woven edges, so there is no straight line for air or energy leaks. The bottom of the foam and any exposed edges, such as at a basement knee wall like this, are wrapped in a metal channel that keeps the bugs out. The metal is sealed to the foundation with silicone cop. Next, the seams and edges are taped with contractor tape. The metal bug shield is taped to the foam also with contractor tape, as are the inside corners and cantilevers. Outside corners are sealed with a wide strip of peel-and-stick membrane to cover the staggered corner sheets. Next, foam under the windows is sliced at a downward angle to extend the sill pan sloping to the outside. And the peel-and-stick is peeled and stuck to the foam. Calvin explains the process. I think it's better to start from the middle because then you can you get less wrinkles and stuff and you work way outward. Do a little cut, not all the way into the corner. Just a little one. So you can get this stuff rolled over a little bit. The corner's nice and watertight. Notice that he cuts the corner shy and bends the membrane to keep the bottom point watertight. With the seams, edges, and corners taped, they turn to installing strapping for a rain screen siding assembly. One by three utility grade strapping is fine. The second layer of screws are longer, obviously, than the first layer of screws. These are about six inches versus four inches on the first layer. The screws are countersunk by cutting partial holes in the furring strips with a spade bit. As the furring strips are secured to the framing, the foam is compressed inward. This can make for a wavy wall when it's time to install siding. At that time, the crew will pull a string across the entire wall and either drive in the screws or back them out to get a nice flat plane. That string line process is not worth doing now because the wood framing may still expand or contract before it's time for siding. 